In the vast ocean of stars that make up our galaxy, most planets are silent. They drift in darkness, frozen, storm-wracked, or scorched. They circle their stars without purpose, their surfaces empty, their skies lifeless. But among the thousands we've discovered, one stands out like a whisper in a library of silence. A world called K218b. A planet orbiting a faint red dwarf star in the constellation Leo, over 110 light years away. For years, it was just a distant dot in a sea of data. A super Earth. Interesting. Mysterious. But not urgent. Then something changed. First came traces of water vapor in its atmosphere. Then, methane. Carbon dioxide. But now, with the power of the James Webb Space Telescope focused on its skies, something extraordinary has emerged. The chemical fingerprints we've detected don't just suggest possibility. They hint at life. Not intelligent civilizations, not yet. But biology, microbial life, plankton-like life, perhaps even something stranger. K218b is what scientists call a Hycean world, a planet with hydrogen-rich skies and oceans beneath. It's bigger than Earth, heavier too, nearly nine times our mass. It floats in its star's habitable zone, where temperatures may allow liquid water to persist. Not boiling, not frozen. Balanced, as life requires. But what truly startled scientists was the presence of an unusual compound in its skies, dimethyl sulfide. On Earth, this chemical is made almost entirely by life, tiny ocean organisms that breathe, feed, and release it into the air. To find it here, 110 light years from home, is like finding a signature on an unsigned letter. Dimethyl disulfide was also found, another clue, another chemical that life often leaves behind. On Earth, these are the smells of marine life. On K218b, they could be the breath of something alien. Imagine oceans cloaked in red light from a cool sun. Waves stirred not by wind, but by thermal tides and chemical currents. Floating in the dark, microscopic life may be blooming. Feeding, breathing, changing its world. It could be a mirror of early Earth, a glimpse into our own ancient beginnings. A planet where life is just taking its first steps. Or maybe, it's older than we imagine. And deeper than we dare to guess. Scientists believe that if life is there, it might resemble our phytoplankton, tiny, drifting beings that harvest light and exhale biosignatures. Or perhaps strange swimmers, adapted to pressure and chemistry we cannot yet model. It might be a world where evolution plays by different rules, but writes the same story. A story of emergence, of persistence, of adaptation. The discovery has shaken the scientific world, and stirred ancient questions. Should we try to speak to whatever lives there? Should we send a signal? Or wait, and watch? Some fear the unknown. Some fear harming a world untouched by our hands. Some believe we are not ready to speak to the stars. But others say the stars are already speaking. And we are only now learning to listen. If there is intelligence on K218b, it may already know we're here. If not, our silence may protect it. Either way, we are standing at a threshold. For the first time, we are not just theorizing about life elsewhere. We are observing signs, chemical, measurable, repeatable that something biological may be unfolding in the dark. The Webb telescope has opened a door. Other missions will follow, more telescopes, more scans, more precision. One day, we may send probes, machines smaller than a hand, driven by light sails, racing across the void. Beyond the shimmering veil of K218b's atmosphere, a new chapter unfolds. Not just in science, but in the human story. Because what we've glimpsed is not an answer. It's a doorway. A threshold into something vaster, stranger, and more profound than anything we've known. The signs of life on K218b, faint, spectral, chemical, have ignited a fire across the world's observatories. Suddenly, the quiet sky is no longer silent. It hums with possibilities. With every spectrum analyzed, we're not just scanning a distant world. 
we're scanning our own past, and perhaps, our future. New studies now suggest K218B's ocean may be tens of kilometers deep. A pressure-cooked abyss, warmed not just by starlight, but by the inner heat of a churning core. Could life there be more than microbial? Could it evolve, adapt, become complex? We don't yet know. But on Earth, life has done stranger things. It grew in sulfur pits and frozen lakes, in the shadows of deep sea vents, under skies of poison. It learned to see without light, and think without air. So what if, beneath the crimson clouds of K218b, something ancient drifts? Something that thinks. Something that remembers. Telescopes can see chemicals, not conversations. They can detect patterns, but not poetry. But the data we're receiving is not static. It changes with the seasons of the planet. It pulses, not randomly, but with a rhythm. A biological pulse, or something else. A system? A cycle? A language? It is too early to say. But patterns in methane fluctuation, suggest metabolic activity. Breath in, breath out. A planetary inhale, a biological heartbeat. Earth has a similar breath, the carbon dioxide curve that rises and falls with our forests and oceans. What if K218b breathes too? What if we are watching not a world, but a being? A biosphere, living as one, like coral reefs and rainforests, but on a planetary scale. Is this what a living world looks like, from 110 light years away? We are beginning to ask questions we never dared put into equations. Could life, in some form, shape the very air of a world? Could a planet evolve not just life, but consciousness? A distributed intelligence, a planetary mind. If so, then K218b might not be a mirror of our Earth. It might be our teacher. And we, its students, barely awake, barely listening. As the James Webb Telescope continues to peer into its skies, new instruments are being prepared. The LUVOIR Observatory. The Hebex Mission. The next generation of cosmic eyes. They will not just detect chemicals, they will hunt for surfaces, oceans, clouds, even shadows of continents beneath alien storms. They may, one day, take an image, a real one. A photograph of that distant ocean world, veiled in light. And what will we see? Perhaps nothing more than swirling gas. Or perhaps, something staring back. A flicker, a pattern, a shimmer of something we can't explain. Already, philosophers and physicists are revisiting old questions. What is life? Where does it begin? And where does it end? Is consciousness bound to biology? Or could it arise in places we've never considered? K218b forces us to stretch the boundaries of what we think is possible. It dares us to imagine not just alien microbes, but alien meaning. For if life exists there, truly, then the silence of the cosmos may not be a void. It may be a waiting. A hush before the first spoken word. And perhaps we have now spoken. Not in sound, but in sight. We have looked at K218b, and it has looked back, in molecules, in motion, in mystery. This is not the end of discovery.